I think I did get some interesting insights about her and this is just personal opinion to kick off with. When she was upset and she would be sobbing usually on the ground that she would be sort of near the front door like she'd be <laughs> she'd be draped at a very convenient entry point where Harry would come in and find her. That happened a few times. She'd be sobbing uncontrollably as he walked in. <laughs> I wondered, you know, does she ever cry anywhere else except in front of the front door or where he's going to walk in? <laughs> but that just struck me as funny. But I'm not talking about the serious time he came in to find her where she was saying that she wanted to end her life. And I'm not going to mock that or laugh about that. But I do have a question about that. She was pregnant with Archie at the time, and I can't work out why she didn't tell her obstetrician. Because I remember even crying in my obstetrician's office because I was working full time. I was managing a bookstore and I was also managing a cafe on my own. I was short staffed. I was running up and down, heavily pregnant, you know, attending to orders in the cafe, running back down, selling books. You know, it was it was hard. And I remember getting teary in my obstetrician's office. So I would imagine that her health care providers would have asked her because clearly she's in a high profile position and under stress surely the question was asked surely it was and it and if it wasn't I think she needed to go and get a better obstetrician um I don't know who it was I'm not implying they were bad but it just doesn't add up the other things I found a bit contrived in the Megan pages were the use of language around um, Prince William and Princess Catherine. It, the, the language was when she went to hug William, he recoiled. And when she wanted to use the lip gloss of Catherine, um, oh, who's sick of that story? I know everyone is. But it was interesting because they said that Catherine reluctantly got out the lip gloss out of her bag and then when Megan used it, she grimaced. And the language was so over the top, you know, recoiled and reluctantly and grimaced. It was some, like something out of a silent movie. It's, it's so o over the top. And also so ridiculous to put in the book unless you were trying to have a go. And... I think they were trying to have a go and to me that's just so petty and so silly because that's only going to come back on you at a later date. And honestly, if they had have left out all the attacks on the family and particularly William and Kate through the Megan pages, I think they could have got away with waltzing off to Montecito. I think they could have been much more high profile in a good way over there. I think Hollywood elite may have actually embraced them. The, the Hollywood elite are standoffish with them because they're terrified that they're going to tell all their secrets. They're terrified there's going to be another book, you know, exposing secrets of their homes and giving blow-by-blow -blow descriptions of private spaces and private conversations. Who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't be scared of that now? Megan went to Whole Foods in Kensington, which I've looked up on Google, and I might put up some photos so you can have a look at it too. And she went to get some food to make a lunch for Harry. Anyway, she claims that she was harassed in this Whole Foods in Kensington and at one point, and I believe that until one point of the story where she said she went to the checkouts and she looked along and there was all these tabloids with awful, she was on basically on the front page of all of them and with awful headlines and that other people that were waiting were looking from the tabloids to her and she had a baseball cap on and a jacket and everything so she, they wouldn't have been able to see her hair and stuff. And they're looking at the tabloids and then looking at her and then looking at the tabloids and looking at her and then, ah, and then putting two things together and then like zombies, they all pulled out their mobile phones and started filming her. Well, that would have made a great script for the documentary, <laughs> but, oh, another stretch. What do you think? Another stretch. They're looking at the line because... 
from what I can tell from Whole food, Foods in Kensington, I don't think they have whole rows of tabloids near the checkouts. I could be wrong. If anyone goes to Kensington Whole Foods, could they comment down below and tell me if I'm wrong? I'm willing to be wrong, but the aesthetic of the shop doesn't seem to lend itself to that. It would just be so out of character for Whole Foods. And also the fact that they could recognize her from just a woman in a baseball cap and a jacket standing quietly at the checkout with a basket full of groceries to like tabloid. I mean, who looks at people in the queue to that extent? And, and, and everyone realizing together. And then she recognized that two of the cashiers gave sort of a snarky look to each other and everything. Oh, Gee, there must be a lot of really horrible people about, particularly in Kensington Whole Foods. And then she walked out and there was four men randomly with smartphones taking photos of her. And they chased her up the street. And, and so, and then this was the occasion when Harry came home and she was draped near the front door. <laughs> so, sobbing uncontrollably. Oh, look, it just smacked of a bit of BS to me. Personal opinion, I don't, uh, I'm not saying it's untrue. It's, it's completely subjective. You read it and see what you think and leave a comment down below if you think my cynicism is warranted or if you think I'm way off the mark and out of line and that's fine too. You don't have to agree with me on this channel. Until I see you again, bye-bye. <music>